Very so, my name is Francine Gordon. I'm one of the co-organizers, the key organizer. Tatiana Consabelli happens to be in Chicago working. She seems to be on the road a lot. Um, so, I would like to make a couple of announcements. One is, because this is in the TEDx format, once our speaker, Ben Dodson, talks, starts talking, for the first 18 minutes, we would prefer that you not ask any questions. We're going to be videotaping the whole thing, and we want to be able to go through with having him un uninterrupted. And then afterwards, he will be here, and we'll have time for Q&A, so number one. Number two, we encourage you to tweet. Our hashtag is TEDxBayArea. It's on your table, so we would appreciate your tweeting. And a special announcement, a special thank you to Jason Madusing. Madusing? Madison. <laughs> um, from American Express, who graciously made a donation to TEDx Bay Area to help with the infrastructure and part of what you're seeing with television was part, we needed that for this particular presentation and we wouldn't have had it without you. So thank you very much for doing that. <laughs> All right. So our speaker this evening is Jason Dodson second year PhD student at Stanford's Moby Social Computing Lab. Moby Social's focus is on creating novel user experience, system architecture, infrastructure design, development frameworks, and security protocols for the programmable open mobile uh, internet by the year 2020. After graduating from University of Pennsylvania with degrees in both computer science and math, Ben worked for two years at a healthcare startup in Philadelphia. At Stanford, Ben has developed several libraries and frameworks that ease the development of device ease spanning capabilities on um, spanning applications. Ben is also the lead developer of the web-based media streaming application, Jinzora. Is that pronounced right? Which is nearing its 10th year of development. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ben to talk about building connections between people and devices. Well, thank you very much for the intro, and thank you all for coming and being here. Um, so, about 20 years ago, uh, a man by the name of Mark Weiser uh, put forward this vision. Uh, and this vision ended up being so innovative and so compelling that it actually launched an entire subfield of computer science, uh, which we now, which we is still active today. Um, this is the field of ubiquitous computing. Now, in this paper published in 1991, uh, Mark Weiser outlined three different devices, three different device modalities. Uh, the first was this thing he called a tab, which is a, a small device, uh, roughly something that would fit inside your pocket. Uh, a pad, which is roughly maybe the size of a large book. And finally, he had a board, which is maybe the size of a table uh, or a, a, a wall, a small wall. Uh, but most importantly, all these devices would work together uh, to, to do some kind of compelling, useful things for us. So these, these three different classes of devices uh, would somehow work together to you know, make our lives better. Um, and furthermore, these devices, there wouldn't just be a few of them, but he really thought there would actually be literally hundreds of them per, maybe per office or per, per building. Now, this was 20 years ago, an important part of his vision is he thought that this is what the world would look like in about 20 years' time. So here we are, fast forward 20 years, and we ask ourselves, are we there yet? Is, is the world that we live in the world that Mark Weiser um, envisioned back, back in 1991? Now, if you were to take a snapshot, uh, this is uh, my friend and co-worker, Ian. Uh, he's working in our lab. If you look at this snapshot, it kind of looks like, yes, we are in this world. Uh, we, see, you know, we see tabs, which we now call cell phones. We see pads, which we now call iPads, uh, and also laptops. Uh, we also see boards in the form of, of TVs and also some experimental work on you know, tabletop computing as well. But if you were to make this more than a snapshot and actually watch how we interact with these devices, uh, you quickly realize that we're actually nowhere near this vision of ubiquitous computing. While we have all these different screens and different modalities around us, uh, they're actually not interacting in, in the seamless way that, that was kind of promised to us back 20 years ago. And so the question I want to ask is why? Why aren't we there yet? We have all these devices. Why aren't they, they working on our behalf? Um, so what I want to put forth is that we're actually not that far off. And if you allow them a few years of error, uh, maybe 20 years is actually a really great guess as to how long it would take to get to this vision. Um, and so there are a few key pieces of technology um, that we can kind of put together to make this vision actually a reality. Uh, and the first that I want to talk about 
as this, this cute little device that we affectionately call a cell phone. Um, more and more, I think, we're seeing people switch over to the smartphone, and the phone is it's no longer just a phone capable of making calls, but it's really just a computer that lives inside our pocket. Uh, because this computer lives in our pocket, um, it's something that we really kind of associate ourselves with, right? So it's, this phone is my phone. Because of that, I kind of put my identity into this phone. I customize it with my applications. It stores references to my services, my bookmarks on those services, and also my personal data that I may not, might not want to even exist in the cloud. So these, these phones, I guess you would call it a tab, um, has become a really important device in today's world. Um, now, to make, to kind of push us closer to this vision that, that Wiser suggested, uh, I also want to talk about another important technology that's gotten quite, quite a lot of publicity this year. Uh, it's called NFC, which stands for Near Field Communication. Um, if you follow the technology buzz on the internet, you'll see it's, it's really mainly talked about um, in the context of payments. Right? The promise is, you know, no longer do we need to carry our wallets with us, but we can put all of that payment technology into the phone, uh, thereby you know, getting rid of one thing we have to carry on our person, and somehow this will offer us a better user experience than, than we have with you know, swipeable credit cards. And moreover, these transactions will actually be more secure as well. Um, and on top of that, we can even bundle other services with these payments, such as we can put you know, loyalty cards uh, and coupons directly into this phone, so that with one swipe, we get it all done. Now, whether or not, whether or not NFC is going to succeed as a payment technology, I have nothing to offer. Um, I don't know, and it's not really of interest to me uh, whether or not NFC will succeed in that space. Um, but I do uh, love NFC as a general technology. And I think it's, it's really powerful, um, and hopefully I will convey that to you as well. Um, but really, the, the fundamental uh, aspect of NFC is this is the first time that we can take two devices and cause them to interact just by touching them together. Right? So I can take two phones, and just by pushing, putting them next to each other, I can exchange some small amount of data with no, you know, no buttons, no setup necessary. It just works. Now, I want to return to this idea of ubiquitous computing, and I want to put forward uh, one small example that, that we might imagine in the Mark Weiser future. Um, so let's say I'm sitting at my desk, and I'm working away, and all of a sudden I get a text message from my friend on, on my phone. Now, my phone doesn't have a keyboard, and it makes typing on it a little, little sub-optimal. Now, of course, there are great keywords out there like swipe and help, but really, I would love to be able to use the PC's keyboard uh, to type, type a message. So, you know, I want to type a message, maybe it's even longer than 140 characters, maybe it's even, God forbid, 180 characters. I mean, I'd like to be able to type this thing as fast as possible. Now, it would be great if I could borrow my, PC, my PC's keyboard to get this done. But here's the, the fundamental problem, is I'm not willing to spend that much time setting up this interaction, right? If, if I'm really going to use my PC's keyboard to enter information onto my phone, it really has to be a very seamless experience, right? I'm not willing to set, spend, spend even, you know, 15 or 20 seconds to make this happen. It really has to be, you know, I want to use my, my PC's keyboard, and there I, there I go, I'm using it. Um, and so it turns out that NFC is a, is a great enabling technology for this kind of interaction, right? Because now I can just touch two devices together um, and make something actually happen. Um, so at this point, I'd like to show you some demonstrations of how we can kind of bring these different um, technologies together um, and maybe bring us, you know, one step closer to Mark Weiser's vision of the future. So. Oh, actually, okay, so as I mentioned, the phone is a great device. Um, if I can bring mine up. Okay, so this here, as you can see on the screen, is what I'm seeing right here on my phone. So as we mentioned, because this is my phone, I, I'm willing to customize it with my personal applications. Um, so in particular, I want to show you one called NFC Flix. Um, so I, I do have a Netflix account, so this is one service I, I subscribe to. Wouldn't it be great if I could take this account with me and, you know, play back the movies uh, on any TV that happens to be in the area? For example, this TV here. Okay, so I can, with this application, I can simply choose the movie I want to play. Balancing act. And all I have to do is touch my phone to my TV's remote. And in just a second, the movie will start playing, streaming straight from Netflix. Of course, this is a short talk, so I think I'll cut it off before it even loads. It is a great movie. Okay, so just like that, I can, I can take a movie off of my phone 
and play it on a TV that happens to be nearby. So movies are one, you know, one great piece of media that we might want to consume on a larger screen. Uh, but how about a more, I mean, we can also do the same, you know, with music. I can simply store my music in a cloud service and simply fling it over to any device that happens to be nearby. I wanted to show the same uh, working on photographs. So here I have my, my photo gallery that's built into the Android phone. And it lets me navigate to any photo. I happen to like cats. So now if I want to share this image with, with people in the room, all I have to do is touch this photo to the, to the remote. And up up per monster. There he is. Now I just want to show that this is not a, this is, this demonstration is in some sense of the word real. Uh, so I can take a picture of you guys. There we go. And without even another button press, I can bring it up on the TV. A little blurry, but you guys look, look great. So, so multimedia is one category of application that we've been exploring uh, for, you know, bringing between the phone and the television. Um, but you can make the argument that there are other technologies that are already well suited for this, right? We have DLNA and, and Apple's AirPlay that are really catered to bringing multimedia you know, from one device to another. Now, we can have a debate as to whether or not there is still use of this version of the technology, um, but again, this is a short talk, so I will, I will spare you that. But I do want to move on to another class of application that to me is, is very clearly not um, a good contestant for kind of these UPnP style technologies. So these are more interactive applications. So I'm going to go ahead and invite my, my friend and colleague TJ up here to help me out. So now my phone will be the phone on the left. And TJ's is on the right. I hope that's not confusing. So here, this, this application, uh, I think no uh, pervasive computing demonstration would be complete without a collaborative whiteboard. Um, so I can run my collaborative whiteboard on my phone, which of course lets me draw. And then simply by touching my phone to TJ's phone, I share the application with him, and he joins the same whiteboard session and sees the same image on his display. So now I can keep drawing, and at the same time he can be drawing. And since I want to share this image with all of you, again, I just touch my TV's remote control. And we see our beautiful drawing up on screen. So the whiteboard is one example of an application that's you know, more, more interactive than just than static, you know, play and pause commands can really um, express. I want to show one more, one more application that really leverages the, uh, the characteristics of each different device. Uh, this is a game of poker. So here I'll launch my game of poker on my, screen, my phone. Now this is a game of Texas Hold'em poker. Uh, really quickly, the rules, or uh, the way the game is played, I have my own private cards, which I get to see in my hand. And we also are going to share some communal cards, which kind of sit on the table for everyone to see. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that this phone is my personal private device. Um, and I'm going to put my private cards on here. I'm going to use the, the shared uh, common display um, as, as a communal board. So again, I touch the phone to the remote. And I share the application in such a way that the TV recognizes itself to be the board uh, of this game. And with the same touch, I can share that application with TJ, and we're off and running in this collaborative game. Don't show TJ the cards, but... <laughs> it's okay, I have a blinder. There we go. I can't see Oh, go on big. And so there we have it. I think we can play this for a long time, but uh, again, short talk, so we'll move on. So again, this is an example of, of an application that I can just download from you know, the Android marketplace. Um, but just because it, it starts out on my phone doesn't mean that's where it has to stop, right? I can bring this and kind of um, involve the other devices around me to make it, make it more exciting and compelling. Now, I find my, my 
research is not rooted in application design. Uh, in fact, all those graphics you saw, I absolutely did not do them. I have no design skills whatsoever. Instead, I find myself to be uh, more of a systems researcher. So what I'm interested in exploring is how can we make these kinds of applications a reality? How can we make them something that developers can develop very easily and that users can actually use uh, in the real world? Um, and so for these demonstrations, you know, we really wanted to focus on the TV as an interesting uh, platform on which to develop. But unlike the PC and the phone, we don't yet have a standard programmable platform on the television, right? We see Android and iOS on the phone, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux on the desktop. But what do we really have on the TV? So we, we don't have an answer, um, but what we do know is that we do see the web as a compelling platform across phones and PCs. So we kind of made the assumption that the web would also be available on the television. So all of the applications that we've developed here um, are written in purely HTML5. Now there's another, another trick that we play. So how did I get the, the information from my phone onto the TV? Given that I bought this TV and in, in fact does not have uh, NFC built into it. So instead, what we've done is played a little trick, right? So NFC has two modes. I can talk to two, you know, two cell phones can touch and be, you know, these active devices can interact. But we can also read these stickers. So what I've done actually is just put a sticker on the back of my TV remote, and the sticker con contains the configuration information of the television. So when my phone touches this remote, um, it sees that a place um, that is not actually this remote, um, but a place that does actually understand the language of NFC. So my phone simply forwards the, the message that it would have sent to this, this down remote and simply forwards it along to the TV instead. Um, so you know, what you saw is something represented on my screen. Uh, that, that The thing on my screen defines the context of what I want to do. So simply by launching something on my phone and touching it to their own, uh, you know, I make it show up on the TV. In the case of uh, media, I'm simply sharing a link to the image, which is actually served off my phone uh, on the Wi-Fi network. Uh, but in the case of the application, we share something a little more advanced. We share both a reference to the application itself um, and also a reference to the session that we want to participate in. Right? I want to make sure that my game of poker is not interfering with somebody else's game of poker in New York. And finally, to make that game of poker in that whiteboard, we need this kind of interactivity to be ongoing. Right? So for this, we've been developing a platform that we call Junction. Right? So NFC is a great technology that works as two devices touch. And it sends just a small piece of information. Now we use this small piece of information to bootstrap a longer session. And the thing that runs that longer session is what we call Junction. It's a platform we've developed for peer-to-peer multi-party interactions. Uh, and you can think of the program programming model as devices literally sitting inside of a chat room and, and talking to each other and sending each other messages. For example, I bet 40 because TJ knows he's going to beat me. Um, so you can really kind of visualize what these programs do by, by just thinking of a chat room. And in fact, the first implementation of Junction literally sat on top of a chat room. And since, since then, we've kind of evolved it beyond that. Uh, the last thing I, I kind of wanted to mention about NFC is while I do love NFC as a technology, um, the touch interaction isn't necessarily the most ideal. Um, so wouldn't it be great if I could actually just point my phone at my TV uh, you know, and fling the content over that way? Why do I have to touch this remote control? Um, so I think part of what NFC gives us is a way of kind of thinking about these two devices interacting. Um, and, in, and in doing so, it kind of, uh, the NFC form has defined this, this data structure called NDEF. And it's the NDEF exchange that I've actually really um, kind of fallen for in terms of the NFC technology. But why not take this NDEF exchange and you know, bring it over to some other technology, for example, line of sight technology, just point it and click and you're done. So I think, I think that NFC is a great starting point, but I don't think it has to end there. So, so there we are, we're 20 years later, um, and maybe, maybe 20 years was a good guess after all. If we can take these kind of small tricks that we can play with these three different technologies, uh, we can be all that much closer to, to Mark Weiser's original vision um, of you know, computers really working together to do the things that, that we want them to do. Cool. So thank you.